What's up everyone? It's Rayvon from Love Lola. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am just so happy to have you here with me. Make sure that you take a moment to look down below in the description box because that's where you're going to find a link to where you can purchase the pattern. I'm going to have links to where I purchase my materials, my vinyls, my zippers, my hardware. If I'm using it, you're going to have a link to where you can find it. Today, we're going to be making just a few things I'm gonna be using quite a few tools I'm gonna to be using a few th tools throughout this video I just want you to know that those tools are available in my Amazon storefront uh, there is a link down below the video where you can get to that and I'll also try to go and add a link right now if you look in the top right corner you'll see a little symbol if you click on that that'll link you straight to my Amazon store and I do receive a small commission for items that you get from that storefront so if you decide to use that link thank you so much I appreciate it uh, thank you for supporting my channel <clears throat> any other items that are not from my Amazon storefront I do link them down below in the video I have <laughs> you'll be surprised how many messages I get from people saying they don't see the stuff down below. So when I say that, if you look below this video, there are words. And if you tap on those words, you'll see the word more. And if you tap on more, then you'll see all the stuff down there. You'll be surprised how many people don't know that information is down there. So that's where the links to any other things that I use. Like I use Sofuse for my interfacing. Um, I use tape from Weft and Warp. So all of those places are linked down below. Okay, so here is the hardware that I'm going to be using today. Uh, I think I'm going to go and add the list next to this picture so you can see exactly what you need if you're interested in that. For my material, for my exterior, I'm going to be using both Ultra Fabrics. They're available on my website. This is called Hammered. If you look closely, you can see it looks like little hammers attack this. So. It's uh, got a nice, you know, I'm all about texture, so I'm going to be using this. And I'm going to be using, this is also Ultra Fabric. It is um, cast iron. And right now, all of my Ultra Fabric material is on sale for $5 a roll. Some of them are even less. I work out of my home and I'm running out of room. I got some more stuff coming in, so um, I have those discounted. So if you've never tried Ultra Fabric, or if you have and you know how great it is, then this is the perfect time for you to grab some. It's a high-end fabric that's used in a lot of um, jets, private jets, a lot of uh, high-end uh, vehicles, designer um, furniture, stuff like that. It's 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 great. It's been my favorite type of uh, material for bag making for a while now. Okay, so that's what I'm using for my lining. I am using waterproof canvas. It's the kind that has the kind of the plastic backing so it's a little bit thicker. That's what I like to use on my bags because I like my bags to have a lot of structure. So um, yeah, that's it. Okay, let's get started. And let's go over a few things that we're gonna be doing. Okay, so our exterior pocket that goes, that's gonna be on the front part of the bag. That is going, you're gonna be cutting, using this template to cut your exterior pocket and also your lining. Now. On your front piece, if you're using that turn lock, you have a mark for where you're going to be marking where the bottom, the male part of your twist lock is going to be going. So this is my piece for the front. What I did was I went ahead and matched up my pocket, my exterior, and the lining pieces. Because this is going to be the front and the back. So I went ahead and matched those up together. And then I marked which one is going to be my front. And then I'm using a twist lock. Because I don't want to mix that up. The twist lock is going to be going 
on your exterior piece on the front, not your lining. You can also mark where you want to put your label if you like. She has a recommendation right there. I'm going to do that. And then she has another mark where you're going to be marking your magnetic snap. So this is my front piece. I have marked for the bottom part of my twist lock on my exterior piece, and I've marked my label. So I'm going to place that to the side. And now I'm going to grab the back piece, which is cut the same, and I'm going to be using a magnetic snap. So because I'm using a magnetic snap, it's going to be going on my lining, not my exterior piece. So I went ahead and marked on my lining where my male part of my magnetic snap is gonna go. Okay, there shouldn't be any marks on that back exterior pocket piece. Take your time and get them marked properly. For our exterior main panel, we have two top pieces. I went ahead and marked on them where my magnetic snap is going to go, the female. That's only for my back piece, right? Because on the front, we're going to be using our turn lock. So I don't need to have... So for my front main panel exterior, I'm not marking anything on it. For my back, I've marked where my magnetic snap is going to go. You'll see that this piece has a drop line. So what I did was I just folded my pattern on that dotted line and laid it on here. And then I transferred that line. And that's going to be my drop line. So you need to make sure that you do that for both of these pieces. Okay. Then for the back piece, we also have where we're going to be putting our flap. So I am going to fold this. And flip this over. I'm going to find my center. there for my strap and I marked to where this connector starts so that I'll know that's where my connector should be okay for your exterior gusset it also has a drop line so go ahead and get that drop line drawn on the back for your flap per usual you're gonna have a flap A and a flap B. One is gonna be slightly longer than the other, so make sure you mark which one is which if you can on the back of your panels or clip it together. Also, like she always does, she gives you an option of having exposed edges or if you want to sew them together and flip it out, which is what I'm gonna be doing. If you're gonna be doing that like me, you're gonna cut along the dotted line, okay? Go ahead and mark on the back of one of your flap A where you're gonna be placing your female part of your twist lock. I've got my handles cut out. I am going to be using the same webbing that I'm using for my strap. Uh, I probably will just fold it in half. Yeah. I'll deal with that later, but I'm going to be using the same thing for my handles and my straps. I've got my lining pieces cut out. We don't need to make any marks on these, so we're good to go. We've got a few little pieces to cut over here. We've got our lining contrast band. Again, you need to put a drop line on that, so make sure that you get that drop line put on those pieces. We've got our shoulder strap connector, and we've got our lining gusset contrast. Make sure you have your drop line drawn on your lining gusset contrast. 
Okay, I think that's about all for the prep work. I have interfaced everything with Sophie's Plus. Like I said, I do have a link for that down below and we can get started. Well, I guess let me get my thread changed. It's it's still brown, I need to get it cream put on. So I'll be back in just a second and we can get started. I have gone ahead and put my logo on. I put it on where she, she suggested it should go on the very front. Now we're gonna grab that front pocket piece this is the piece that has the same material cut in the exterior and the lining. Okay, so we are going to take these and place them right sides together. Oh, boop. Y'all, I'm struggling over here. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> okay, so we're going to place these right sides together. I thought I marked the midpoint of all my pieces. Obviously, I did not. All right. <laughs> I'm going to sew this at one-fourth of an inch seam allowance. Uh, let me get my top stitching table put on here. Absolutely love this baby. I have a review for it on my page. If you're interested, I'll see if I can find it. And if you look in the right hand corner right about now, I should have a link for it. Okay. Here we go. One fourth of an inch seam allowance. Today I'm sewing on my baby, the Mata 1341. It's what I sew everything on. Go ahead and make some um, little snips where the curve is. Flip it over. Finger press it really good and now we're gonna go and add a top stitch at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance okay now we're gonna get that lock installed again only going through the exterior as usual, I always add a little piece of stabilizer behind my hardware. I am using Pelon Peltex 70 to do this. Okay, we can set this aside for just a second and let's grab our strap connector. You can draw a line down the middle long way. And then if you would like to use double-sided tape, you can use that to fold it in. I think I'm just going to use a few clamps. Let's go and add a top stitch along around the entire thing. I was supposed to cut that on the full, then I didn't. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go and cut another one to make really quick, okay? But, um,. If you did cut it on the fold, that means you would be able to cut this piece into four equal pieces. Because I didn't cut it on the fold, I'm cutting it into two equal pieces. And now I'm going to go and do it again. Okay, so I've got all of my strap connector pieces cut. I went ahead and grabbed a tiny piece of double-sided tape and placed it along the bottom, one short end of each piece. And this is on the correct side of these straps. So the tape is on the correct side of these strap connectors, not the bottom. Okay, so our exterior main panel top. Now remember we cut two of these. And one of them we drew a line for where we're going to be putting the flap. So that piece is going to be for the back. So don't use that piece. Grab the other one. And then use your template to see where you need to place these. Okay, so I've got 
slowly but surely. Okay, I got the tape off. Place it right there. When you base this strap connector piece all four times, even when we do the front pocket, you want your exterior piece to be right side facing up and you want that strap piece to also be right side facing up. And then later when we go and fold this under, when you fold it under, you wanna fold it like this towards the back. You want to fold the strap piece so that it goes behind itself. Okay, so if you're seeing this gusset piece instead of the pocket piece, that's why I, I'm, I edited it to go back and show you the correct way. Okay. And now we're going to base that on really quick. Okay, so now we're going to be finding our bottom piece that goes here, and that's going to be in the lining. Okay, let's see. There we go, the exterior main panel bottom pieces. So I'm gonna take that and I'm going to place it so that it's right side facing down. So this piece is right side facing up. The strap connectors are wrong side facing up and our lining is going to be right side facing down. And now we're going to go and get this attached at one fourth inch seam allowance. All right, and oh, <laughs> okay, and now we want to press our seam allowance so that it's going down towards the bottom of the bag. And we're going to top stitch it at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now if you want to get some more stabilizer or um, if you want to get a stabilizer attached to this, you can go ahead and do that now. I think I'm good on stabilizer. Yeah. Now let's grab If you do use stabilizer, make sure that you only use it up to the point where you made that drop line like I did for my interfacing. All right, so now what we're gonna do is you can grab some tape and place it on your straps. And we're just gonna run our um, rings through it. And we're gonna take the tip of this and we're gonna just run it to where the bottom piece starts. Really simple. And then we're gonna go and get two rivets put in. I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. It's not really gonna show. Put one about right here, and one about right here. All right. Now we're going to grab our front pocket, match up your midpoints. Okay, we're gonna get this basted on at um, 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, y'all ready to do basically the same thing to the back? So let's grab our two pockets. 
the exterior and the lining you should have made a mark on your lining where the um, magnetic snap is going to go we're going to place these right sides together and sew them at one fourth of an inch seam allowance let's make some snips Flip it over. Reverse, reverse. I remember that song. Reverse, reverse. <laughs> no. Just me. All right. Now we're going to go back and top stitch at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now go ahead and get your magnetic snap installed. Just like before, make sure that you're only cutting through your lining piece okay you don't want to cut your exterior fabric at this point okay now we're going to do the same thing we did earlier to get our strap connectors connected so i'm going to turn this off real quick while i do that remember we just lined it up basted it on the Top piece is right side facing up. Our strap piece is going to be right side facing down. Okay. Okay. Once I got my rivets put on, I went ahead and got the female part of my magnetic snap put on to this top panel piece. Okay. Now we're going to just place the pocket right on top, matching up the midpoints. And just like before, we're going to go and get this basted on. To the bottom and we're basting this at one eighth of an inch seam allowance all right so i am going to place my straps right sides together again i have already interfaced these and i need to go ahead and mark where i'm going to be placing my turn lock And I'm marking this on the front because we're going to have to be able to see this from the front. If you're doing a magnetic snap, then you can mark it on the back and, um, and get that done accordingly. But I'm doing a turn lock. <laughs> and you want to mark that on flap A because remember flap A is slightly longer than flap B. So that's going to be your front piece. All right. And I'm going to line these up right sides touching. and pin them really really good because we want this to be very precise with these pretty curves and when you go to get them sewn together make sure make sure that you have flap a facing up to use that as your guide because that's the side that really matters when you're trying to get those edges to look perfect okay All right, and I'm gonna sew this at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. The longer piece is facing up. The longer piece is facing up. <laughs> Actually, you can, it doesn't matter. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's turn it out. Finger press those seams. Now, when you turn your um, flap out, if it's got wrinkles in it and it's bothering you, if you have a heat press, what I'll do right now is just get some, like, cotton material or something or something that's not too thick, and I'll place it over this and pl put it under my heat press for just a few seconds, and it'll get rid of those wrinkles. Mm -hmm. 
I'm okay with it. It's not too bad. All right, I got my stabilizer that I cut right here. So I'm gonna just slide it right in. I might need to make a few snips. All right, and I'm gonna just slip this right inside. Now I'm gonna add some pins, and then I'm gonna go and get a top stitch at it. All right, and I'm gonna go and top stitch around the sides, not the top yet, just around the sides. One eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we are going to get this lock installed. I'm just gonna find the center of the mark that we made earlier. And then I'm gonna use a erasable marker to draw a dot in that hole and to outline that circle. All right, and I'm gonna find a die that matches that size. Remember when I mentioned that I have uh, a Amazon storefront with all the stuff that I buy? This kit is in there. It's really cheap. I want to say it's between $11 and $15. There we go. That's perfect. Um, and it has a whole bunch of dies. If you ever need to make a hole in your bag or your project, then it probably will fit. So there's a link to my Amazon store in the description box of this video. Actually, I'll add a link in the top corner of this video. You'll see about right there about right there <laughs> if you click on that it'll bring you to my amazon store i do get a commission for um you using that link so if you decide to use it then thank you so much i truly do appreciate it i can't find the thing that this came with to bang on so i just use this wood I think I kind of went crazy with that one. <laughs> See how easy that is? Okay, and now I need to get these side pieces. So this is gonna work for that. Okay, so let's grab this. Put it on through the front. Sometimes the hole isn't quite big enough. You have to go back and make adjustments. Let's see if this one worked. Yeah, I need to make it a little bit wider. All right, once your hole is the right size, you're going to just, from the front, shove that in, and you should be able to see that hole where you're gonna be putting the screw in on the back, okay? Just place it right on top. You don't want any material poking out, so just shove it into that groove that's right around it. I gotta hurry up and get downstairs to my baby. <sighs> Dad's out of town, so she's by herself and she's not happy. She wants some attention. Okay, and now I'm just going to take my screw. If you like, you can put a little jewelry glue in the hole before you screw it in. I don't do that because um, I've ruined my lock. Because once the jewelry glue gets on it, it, you can't get it off. And I've had it leak out a little bit and it shows and I just can't. So until I get my confidence back up, I'm okay with not using glue 
and just making sure that I tighten it as much as I can. And we should be good. Actually, before you tighten it all the way, turn it over and look at it and make sure that it doesn't look crooked. Okay. Because you don't want a crooked lock on the front. All right. Okay, that looks good. Oh, it's so pretty already. Love it. All right, I'm going to stop here tonight and we'll finish this up tomorrow. Okay, so we're here with our flap. Turn it over to the back side and you'll see that your long piece is sticking up. Place some double-sided tape right along the top of the shorter piece. And we're just going to fold that top piece over. So basically, there will be no exposed edges is what we're doing. If you need to put a few clamps on it for a second, you can. I'm gonna to try to hurry up. I'm gonna grab my back panel piece. And remember that line that we made earlier? If you didn't make the line yet, just go get your, um, your, your template and use it to make the line. And then I place double-sided tape right above the line. I'm gonna take that off. And I'm gonna just place this on there using the midpoint as my guide. And we're placing it right above that line so that the line that we drew doesn't show. And now we're gonna go and we're gonna get two stitches at it. We're gonna do one at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance above the edge and then we're gonna do a second one at 1 4 of an inch seam allowance. Now you don't want to back stitch on there, when, when you start and you end, you're going to leave your thread long so that you can pull it through the back and tie it and we don't see any back stitching marks, okay? Oh, I got to go change my thread. Blah. All right, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I, I decided that I'm going to be adding piping. So if you're doing that, go ahead and get that attached. If you're not, skip ahead to the next part. Let me mark where my piping goes. I'm going to be recording a strictly piping video in the upcoming weeks. I never go into detail while I'm sewing it just because um, I don't have time when I'm making my videos usually. But I'll, I'll do a, a video strictly for piping. And when I do that, I'll go ahead and attach it, attach it to each video so that you'll easily have access to it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get our piping on, and then we'll move on to the next step. Today I decided to use my welting foot to get my piping attached. And do you see how good that looks? That foot gets so close to the cording. All right, now grab your gusset pieces. Now remember you should have marked at the top your drop lines, okay? We're gonna attach them at the bottom. So the shorter side, the top is gonna be a little bit wider than the bottom. Attach that right sides together, and we're going to get this sewn together at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've got that on, you're going to just press it open, finger press it and flip it over and we're going to get a top stitch added at 1 8 of an inch along both sides.
Okay, now grab one of your panels, find your midpoint of both pieces, and join them together. And now you are going to continue to join this, and you're going to start from the midpoint and go up one side and up the other. She says if you need to, you can get it basted on at one eighth of an inch seam allowance and then go back and get it added at one fourth. Okay, look, I'm not even gonna lie. So after I got it connected from the center out, the tops were not matching up. So I went ahead and took it off and matched up my middle and my top and then worked my way to the middle. You know, I'm just keeping it real. That's what I had to do. I don't know what I did to make it have to do that but that's what I had to do so just in case it also ends up uneven at the top for you an option is to do it the other way okay oh I don't know it's okay it's okay just do it okay now once you if you did piping once you've got that on before you add the other piece and turn it out go ahead and check it and make sure that the piping looks correct and um this looks pretty damn good if I do say so myself I used my welting foot today I'm gonna to be doing a video tutorial on that soon but um let's check it out I mean baby you can't get much more perfect than this right Nice and tiny. I use one eighth of an inch cording for my piping. Came out pretty fantastic, if I do say so myself. All right, <laughs> let me shut up and finish this bag. <laughs> I'm gonna do the other side, okay? Alrighty, once you've got both sides sewn together, you can go ahead and turn it out. Play with your seams, get them worked out. Before you turn it out, you can go ahead and trim those down just a little bit, especially in the corners and the curves. If you don't want to trim it, then you can at least add some snips to help it lay smoother. I like to use my tool to help it lay smoother if I've got some thick seams going on. This is the go-to way for me to smooth them out. Again, this tool is available in my Amazon storefronts. There's a link somewhere. You've seen it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go and add it again. You know, it's a lot of work. It is what it is. This looks so good already. I am so pumped. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go ahead and work on our lining. Grab your two main lining pieces and grab your lining contrast band. We get, again, you should have already drawn on the back where that drop line is on that contrast band, okay? All right, take one of your lining pieces and one of your contrast bands. It should be the longer side. The longer side is the bottom. Place them right sides touching and go and get these sewn together at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. 
Okay, now you want to press it so that your seam allowance is going towards the bottom. And now we're going to top stitch along the, on top of the lining piece and one eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, and repeat the same thing to the other side. Okay, so right now, if you like, you can add a welting pocket, a welt pocket to one of these linings, or you can add a zipper pocket, a slip pocket, whatever you want. I'm not gonna show it because I don't have a lot of data or time, but I am gonna link right now my video of making a welt, the Shambhala welt pocket, and also a video of my just a normal slip pocket and a um a zipper pocket for the lining okay so i'm going to go ahead and get all this done off camera and i'll meet you in a few min few minutes Alrighty, once you've got your lining done however you want to get it done grab your lining i mean your shoulder strap connector draw a line down the center a long way and if you want to use double-sided tape you can do that or you can just fold it in and pin it Again, I'm using one half inch connectors and so um, I adjusted my size for that. It doesn't really matter. I've got so many one half inch D rings that I just want to use it. And plus I like a little D-ring connector. I don't know why, it just seems really cute. Okay, and now we're gonna just sew around the entire thing at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you've got that done, you can fold it in half and cut it. All right, now let's grab our gusset. The top part of the gusset is a slightly wider than the bottom, so make sure you're dealing with the top part grab that little piece and it's going to show you where you need to oh blah <laughs> here we go now make sure th this lining gusset contrast piece that you have drawn your line for your drop okay and that line needs to be towards the top all right now we're going to place this here And here. And we're gonna base these on at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right. Now grab your gusset piece wide part at the top. And you're gonna place these so that they're right sides touching. And let's go and get these sewn together at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. When you base this strap connector piece all four times, even when we do the front pocket, you want your exterior piece to be right side facing up and you want that strap piece to also be right side facing up. And then later when we go and fold this under, when you fold it under, you wanna fold it like this towards the back all right once you have it connected finger press it and you're going to sew at one eighth of an inch seam allowance on the lining part of the gusset okay once you have that attached you want to finger press it and you want your seam allowance to go down behind your lining piece and then we're going to top stitch on that lining piece at one eighth of an inch seam allowance Okay, so I'm showing this now because I did it wrong earlier. Earlier, I folded it over like this, but that's not right. You want to fold the strap piece so that it goes behind itself. Okay, so if you're seeing this gusset piece instead of the pocket piece, that's why I, I, I edited it to go back and show you the correct way. Okay, so when your strap piece is sticking out, grab your connector, run it through, 
and then take this strap piece and fold it behind itself. You can use double-sided tape right here, actually. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. I'm not going to, I think it's fine. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and get a hole punched in. So this way there's no exposed edges. It makes sense, I don't know why I did that earlier. Oh gosh, my baby and her friends are over. So um, that's that ruckus that you hear. So just try to ignore it, please. I'm just kids having fun and being loud. Cause that's what they do. Okay, so now we're gonna get our lining assembled the same way we did our um, exterior. We're gonna get this sewn together at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, open it up, top stitch, and then we're gonna get it added to the lining the exact same way we did the exterior, okay? So go ahead and get that done, and I'll meet you back in a minute. Okay, when we sew our lining, we are going to start at 1 4 of an inch seam allowance at the top, and then we're going to increase to about half of an inch seam allowance as we go. So about an inch down, go ahead and start increasing that seam allowance. And that's going to make sure that we don't have a saggy lining. Who likes that? All right, once you've got your lining done, you can go ahead and trim it down. But don't trim down the top part. Like leave about an inch at the very top at the length that it is because we're going to be opening those up when we get them attached later. Okay, so when I made this bag, I didn't want to put stabilizer in it because I just, um, I don't know, I just didn't. If you ever get towards the end of your bag and you feel like it needs a little bit more stability than what you have gone with, this is pretty good, but I just decided I wanted to be a little bit stiffer than it is, it's not too late at the very end. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add a little bit of stabilizer and I'm only gonna add it on the bottom of my bag. I just want a little bit of stiffness on this bottom so that when I'm digging around in it or whoever purchases it is digging around in it, it's not gonna just collapse on them, okay? So I'm using Pellon Peltex 70 Stabilizer, my favorite stabilizer. And I cut this for this bag, I cut it three inches wide by eight and a half inches long. You don't need to spray any kind of adhesive. I'm doing it just for show and just for overkill, but it's not necessarily usually necessary. Usually I just go ahead and stuff my my stabilizer in and I've never had an issue. But for the sake of it, I'm going to go ahead and spray along the bottom of this bag. If you have some kind of glue or anything that you like to use to stick stuff together, go for it. It's whatever, it's your world. All right. So I'm spraying this along the bottom. Got it. And now I am going to just place this right along the bottom and centered. And just stuff it between those seams. Right between those seams. You can definitely feel it. It just gives that little bit more stability on the bottom so that it's not gonna fold in. Now, if you want, you can do it along the entire gusset. I usually do. I just felt like with this bag today, the way that it's supposed to go out on the sides like that, I didn't feel like it needed that stability. You know what I mean? Just my opinion. But you can definitely have that stabilizer go up and down the entire thing. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and continue with our drop-in lining. What we are going to do is get double-sided tape and place it all along around here. And we're going to open up wherever we have a seam allowance and fold down onto that drop line. See? And we're gonna do that to the lining and also to our exterior piece.
I'm gonna start getting my tape put on. Again, we're opening up those seams whenever we get to a seam allowance and placing the tape over it. Okay, we're gonna press it, get it really secure. And we're folding down to the line. So the top is going to fold over and meet that line. Now I'm using um, a pretty thick material, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some clamps just in case, make sure it stays where it needs to stay. If you need to trim down the seam allowance when you get to where those seams are, then go ahead and do that. If you feel like your machine is gonna have an issue with that. My machine is pretty gangsta, so I ain't scared. I love drop-in linings. It's my favorite way to finish a bag. I really hate turning bags out. Um, I'm all for a drop-in. <laughs> I know some people are the opposite. They hate doing drop-ins, but my gosh, they're so much easier to me. I just prefer them. Mm -hmm. All right, and now do the same thing to your exterior, okay? And then we're gonna get them stuffed together and we're gonna be good to go. All right, once you've got your pins, once you've got the top of your lining and your exterior clamped all the way around, all we're gonna do is place our lining inside of our exterior. Slide it in. Booyah. Okay, and now we are going to match all of our points up and get this attached to each other, okay? All right, so I can see my midpoint right here in the front. I'm gonna start off matching that up. Those two midpoints right there. These big clamps are very handy when you're dealing with a lot of materials. They're available on my Amazon storefront store. You've seen the link already as you're connecting them you basically just taking the clamps off and reclamping them together so let me go and find my back point okay. now we're going to match up our side points So we're matching up where the gusset meets the back piece on the lining and the exterior. Now, a little secret, if, if you feel like it's getting too thick for your machine at these four points, what you can do is, before you join it together, get a hammer, protect your fabric. So get another piece of cotton material or vinyl or whatever and place it on top of it. But then take your hammer, lay your material on your table and just hammer it. And that's gonna flatten those seams out really good and I promise you, you'll be able to get your machine over it at that point, okay? I don't have to worry about it now because I have like an, a, a really good industrial machine but before whenever i would have issues like that when the seams would get a little bit too bulky that's what i would do i would just get my hammer out and it would always fix it for me again make sure you protect your ham your material because that, the hammer will rip the fabric i learned the hard way depending on your material and how you're hitting it if, if the hammer slides you know 
be careful. Do it at your own discretion. I'm just trying to tell you what I did. But if something goes wrong, it ain't my fault. It ain't my fault. Mm -mm -mm. Did I do that? <laughs> That's what you're gonna be saying if that happens. I know it's cool. Okay, now once you've got those four points put together, now just work your way around the entire thing and get it attached completely, okay? All right. Here we go. Let's get our top stitch on and we're doing this at one eighth of an inch seam allowance around the entire bag. All right, we've got this done. It looks so good. Let's get our handles and our straps done. Now, if you're gonna be making straps out of your um, material, just go ahead and use the instructions. I'm gonna be using webbing for mine. This is one and a half inch webbing. I also made my handles shorter because I like a short handle for my bags um, and then it'll have a crossbody. So this is only about, I think 21 inches. I'm going to fold, well, you know, first I'm gonna burn it. Whenever I use webbing, I make sure that I uh, burn my ends really good just to help it to not want to fray. I'm also going to be using strap ends, so. going to sew about probably about two inches up on either side I lied that's three inches <laughs> so I'm gonna do it about three inches I'm gonna do that to all of the four ends all right if you want, you can go ahead and get your strap in at it now. I think that's what I'm going to do. She said you want to fold it under at about one inch. So all you're going to do is run it through, bend it at a one inch mark. I didn't measure mine. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I am placing a hole in the middle of that. And then I'm going to get it riveted. I did burn the hole after I pushed it. I just put a little fire to it because it's webbing. Just to be safe. Whoops. All right, y'all, we're almost done. We're at the finish line. So you can do your strapping according to the instructions. It's just in the traditional strap. I'm going to be doing mine with webbing. So I think I cut this about 54 inches. We have got our strap ends, an adjustable slider, and swivel hook. Of course, these are all available at lovelittlelooks.com. I'll put a link in the corner about right there, I think. All right, I'm just gonna grab this and bring it up and over. And I don't want any edges to be exposed, so I'm just going to fold it over once, and then I'm gonna fold it over again. And now I'm gonna go and get a stitch added. You can rivet it if you like. I try to rivet as least as possible when dealing with uh, webbing, so for that reason, I am going to sew it on. Okay, so once we have that on, we're gonna make it, place it so that it's wrong side facing up and just run down and making sure that the strap isn't twisted. And then we're just gonna put our swivel hook through it. Okay, run it back through, making sure that it's not twisted.
Now we are going to run this up and through that. and back down the other side. Just like that. All right, and now on the other end, we're gonna grab our swivel hook. And this time I'm gonna get my strap in attached to it because I don't want any edges exposed. But first I'm going to fold it over one time and sew that. And then I'm gonna go and add this on top of it. So I'm folding it over like this and adding a top stitch at 1 8 of an inch. And that's because I need that end to be a little bit thicker for the strap to fit. Okay. And now I'm going to slide my strap in on top. Okay. Burning it one more time just to get those little bit of threads that are showing. You know what? Actually, I'm going to get this sewn on first. All right, so I'm going to fold it down at about an inch, maybe a little less than an inch. And I'm going to sew across here to get that attached, and then I'll add my strap in. Sliding that right on top. There we go. All right. And we're done. Yay. There's our adjustable strap. This baby is ready to go. Love it. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. All right, y'all, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. You can find me on all of the social media platforms. And I'll also go ahead and add all of that stuff in my, um, I'll add a link to all of that stuff in the video description box as well. So thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.